Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. So today, one of the gals in the Pinterest SEO, Google SEO group that I belong to had asked to know um, like how to track their posts and how to tell if they're going up or down. And so the, like what she functionally wanted to know, I think is if you're losing, if you're losing views to your website, how do you know which ones you're losing them on? And um, so I have a couple of ways I do this and I'll show you. Um, I start with the Google search console. So what you want to start with is your um, Google search console and you want to find your top. So these are your, these are your under search results. When you get here, you may need to go to search results and open report. Sometimes it's on the left and sometimes it isn't. My friend Barb's doesn't have it on the left, so I don't know why. But you want to go to pages. So even if it's a blog post, they call them pages. And so this is my best page, my best blog post. Finding first client real estate marketing. So I'm going to say finding first client. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that that post is updated. So we're going to go to Marketing Artfully. And I'm going to search for Finding First Client. And it's actually finding your very first listing. Okay. So I think I've updated it recently. November 19th, 2020. So it is about six months old. So this is definitely something that I could look at getting, um, you know, to, to start making a list of things to do. So I'm going to say to update that. Um, and by update, I mean I go through the, so let's go to here. We're going to click on this link. And now we're in that specific page. See how you can tell right here that it's that specific page? And we're going to click on queries. So we're in just the queries for that specific page, not for my whole website. So I have about a, oh God, 10% click-through rate on how to get clients in real estate. So let's do a search, how to get clients in real estate. Okay, so that's two things I can do now. I know that I don't have that search term in this blog post, and I yet I still rank really well for it. So what I would do is I could do one or two things. I could make another blog post knowing that my site would rank well for that search term, um, because they already think this page is about that, even though it's, it is, but it doesn't have that exact search term. Or I could add that exact search term as a headline and find out if I could get, I'm already getting 10% of the impressions, which makes me think that I am probably number one or I am um, doing something else. So I'm going to show you how to track your pages, but I also want to, give you some information about how you can, while you're doing this work, what you can do to help yourself. And I'm opening up a, um, I don't have anything in Firefox. I just use Firefox as my um, anonymized browser because I don't use it for anything at all. I don't, I'm not logged in. I don't have anything like that. So how to get qualified leads, the close, how to get your first listing client. So I'm number two for that right? Um, how to get clients in real estate. So I rank really well. Um, this is, theirs is updated sooner than mine. Um, this is, this is more how to, I can tell just by looking at this, this is more how they're selling courses where I'm actually giving information. So what's happening is 10% of the people are going here and saying, okay, that, so, um, I could even say, 
um, free information, something like that. So that's something that I could think about doing for that blog post. How to get real estate clients, which is just the same thing, right? Um, just backwards. So I'm making more than 10% of those. So that is a good post for me. So now I want to go back to here and you want to think about two different things, click versus impressions. So I have gotten 7,000 hits to my website this last month on this one blog post at, or last three months. And, um, I have total impressions. So that's a bad ratio of all the search terms that they've shown. Because remember, I don't have that one search term up here anymore. I took it out. Of all the impressions, it's doing well. Um, okay, so this post is doing okay, right? It's about the same. Um, maybe the click, maybe the clicks are going down a little bit. So the high was 28 50 and now my high is I don't know, it makes sense. Oh, my clicks are 104 and my clicks are 102 there. So this is pretty steady. My clicks were 122. Now, let's talk about seasonality because I think this really freaks people out. It is June 8th today. Well, it's not June 8th today. It's June 10th today, but June 8th is the last day that my search console is showing me. Uh, seasonally, realtors do not like to work as much in the summer. A lot of them are women. They have kids getting out of school. This is a time of year where my search volume is going to go down anyways. So I wouldn't count this as a page where my search volume went down. Um, I, one last thing that I want to show you that I do to track my top pages, where's my, is I have a little form I use, um, that's my own little form. It just fits into this very special little notebook I made. Um, but it's big blog goals this month, this month, this year, what is my monthly theme? Am I working on a niche? Um, my earnings for this year, my earnings for last year. And then I want to know the, my top pages by, um, by volume and ranking. So down here, this is where I would put in keyword, keyword, hold on, I got to get to that thing again, how to get clients in real estate, the volume and what position I'm in. So I would have volume was what? volume was 7,000, but that's not for that one keyword, right? So you have to decide, are you going to do volume for that entire page? Which yes, probably, but I tend to go down to the keyword level and see if there's something that I should be working on with that. Okay, let's go back to our search uh, results. It took away that that um, specific URL up here, so we're good. So I need to know, and this is this is the queries. So they're telling me my top queries. Um, how to sell digital art? Oh, so. This for me is more important than, um, than which page is working, right? So, so I have lost the query, how to sell digital art. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say how to sell digital art. So he, I am in the, the, the these are all my pictures. This is my website. Huh. So there's nothing that I can do more. I mean, I'm in the number one position or I'm in the zero position. I could do a video, right? Yeah, I'm in the number one position too. So there's nothing more that I can do. So let's go to, let's copy this because we want to find out, is it my problem 
or is it a industry problem? So we're going to go to Google Trends. And I'm going to say how to sell digital art search term. So we're looking at the past 12 months and it is, there was a peak that I took advantage of and now it's going down. So if I had to make a guess because I've been doing this for a very long time, I would guess that it is the summer and people are going to later in the summer be more excited about how to sell digital art when it's going into the fourth quarter and they want to find out how to make money based on that. But this isn't the best time of year for me. So that's something else that you want to do. So we're going to get rid of this query. And then what I would do is I would go to my pages and I, I would write down my top 10 pages. You should know off the top of your head, literally what your top 10 pages are. How to find first listing client real estate marketing. How to avoid problems with Disney Etsy sellers. How to sell digital, that's that digital downloads of your artwork. Increasing your views on Etsy, di more digital downloads demographics oh my gosh that was such a funny one i wrote a post just 10 years ago um and i got ranked for demographics it l has almost nothing to do with my website but it gets me lots of traffic um free report titles i made that for me because i had to make report titles and i didn't want to have to think of it. oh this is the one it's number two now to that one uh doing pinterest for etsy sellers i have a product i sell about that but let's take a look at that so that would matter to me that it's going down so if this one is going down right we can tell the clicks are going down let's look at our queries how to use pinterest for etsy and uh, that one looks pretty normal I want to see if I can find out which, uh, that may have gone down a little bit. I don't know if it's enough to really bother it. Let's try Pinterest for Etsy. So a lot of times people get really upset that their site is going down, um, but they won't understand that it's just that maybe you lost a keyword um instead of it being that you have that so this is search console that is how i tend to track this kind of thing then you go into google analytics right so now you have your visits by landing page i made myself a dashboard on my home page that is um really good for so there's my best one finding my first listing real estate client marketing um I can do, so a lot of times uh, they will not have any keyword data in this. Um, so that is, they don't put keyword data in Google anymore, in analytics anymore. You have to do it in your search console. So, um, so now you can just kind of see it's pretty normal, right? Uh, you may want to go and say, okay, how's it since the first of the year, right? If you think that maybe this is one of your pages that went down, because to notice a big drop in your site, you need to know, um, and my site's really stable. I can't show you a page where, my, where, my, where I had a big drop in things. Um, but so it may be trending down. You can more tell it if you put on week, right? So I can see there's a slight trend down, but I have this slight trend down. I think we can do compare. Hold on. Compare to, uh, let's do Jan 1, 1, 2020 through June 9th, 2020. Should be happy now. What's it matter with? What's the matter with it? Jan one, comma. Oh look, I have a weird character in there. There it is. Now it'll let me do it. All right. So we're gonna see. It's still higher than last year. I also had, but that's because of coronavirus. Some of it, 
but it's higher than last year and I always have that little dip and then it'll come back. Um, let's go do a real year. Let's do 19 and 19. I think it's going to be hard for us to um, compare regular years to 2020. So there, see? Um, that must have been when I wrote the blog post. So I had a really good blog post. It went down and then it went back up because for real estate almost entirely, it um, tanks during December. A lot of realtors don't work during December. But so that way you could see, is this something that is, is truly a problem? Is it a seasonal problem? Um, and then one last thing, I have to switch you to somebody else and I'll put a link to, uh, to this, um, because the SEO class is both for Pinterest and for, uh, Google, I use Christy Hill's, um, Pinterest dashboard by Christy Hill. And so here's my sessions from. Pinterest and let's go ahead and and it's a very low number you guys compared to my real sessions um, Jan 1 we're gonna apply we're gonna see if we've gone up or down that's pretty steady so say March 31st 2021 March 31st so let's do all of March March 1 because I might have gotten March 31st. I might might have gotten a little nervous if I was really watching it, right? And so I would do top posts on Pinterest. It's going down. There's Pinterest. You're going to click on Pinterest again. You can click on it again, and it's going to let you drill down and see which Pinterest pins are going up and down. Um, so this one was actually going up. So my pin... Okay, so maybe what I was seeing wasn't that Pinterest was going down. It was that Pinterest went up one day rather than going down, right? Right? Oh, this is artsy fartsy. This is big numbers. Hold on. I wasn't going to show you my artsy fartsy stuff. Let me show you my marketing art play stuff. Because <laughs> uh, my artsy fartsy stuff is doing really well. So I'm not showing you the back end of that. My marketing art play stuff. I've had that blog since 2008. It's super steady. Um, we had an update. So they said Saturday, June 5th, the update, the Google update rolled out. Um. This is Pinterest, so I don't know why. I might have gotten lower because Pinterest got a little hit from the Google update. Um, but these are my, so so remember I have like 7,000 sessions, only 500 come from Pinterest. I'm way more SEO based than Pinterest based. Um, but how to set up your DIY business planner. And you can start to see, oh, those are old promoted pins. Uh, like, is it coming from Tailwind Tribes? Is it coming from Smart Loop, which I don't really do anymore. So this is all old Smart Loop stuff. This is Tailwind Tribes. Um, so I don't have a good way to show you how to do this. I would just say get the pin. I guess I could try to tell you. Um, but I'll put a link to how to get this Christy Hill uh, uh, dash Pinterest dashboard. All right, let's try this. We'll try to be big kids. Stats, marketing artfully. You're going to go to acquisition. You're going to go to all traffic. You're going to go to source medium. You could maybe go to channels. I think it goes kind of the same, but... I always do source medium. And then this is the referral and the secondary dimension. We want to put in landing page. And then it'll tell us which of our pins, which um, 
you know, which pages are getting the most hits to your pins, right? Right. All right, so that should give you an idea. Um, one last thing I'm going to put in here, just because I want to show you how I actually do it. Um, I am a Mediavine publisher. That's who provides the ads for my websites. So um, I use this little report that they give us which I adore. So every month I go and I look at this top pages for this range. Remember, I have this little form that I use. So top pages by revenue. Let's go back there. So the top pages by revenue, doo, doo, doo. finding first listing clients, real estate, ultimate guide to selling digital downloads. That's different. That is not the selling art one. That I have a whole content niche about, about that. That's not the one that we looked at before. Avoiding problems with Disney, Etio shipping, increasing Etsy views. Okay, so now let's keep in mind those. Oh, here, let's do this. So say we take these first five-ish. Now we're going to test by RPM, meaning that's the aggregated number of um, how many... based on how many views you get versus your uh, CPM, which is your uh, money per thousand. Okay, let's see. Uh, no, no. So my highest revenue ones, my highest RPM ones, oh my gosh, it's $245 dollars. <laughs> A thousand. So I'm making pennies on this. So then I would come down here and I'd try to find ones with high RPM. So the reason why this RPM is so high is because this is a domain name one. So I'm probably getting paid $19. That's really good. See over here, I got paid two fifty two seventy because it's a lot of money, but there's just not that many views or people looking at it. But this one to me is interesting, picking a real estate domain name, because I made $20 on this because the RPM is so high because it's business related, right? And this one's a real good for me, Etsy SEO for t-shirt sellers. So I must have gotten almost a thousand views on that because the RPM. And then the last thing I look at, let's look at our little form, is the top page of CPM, and that's telling me how, um, uh-oh, we got to move this. Doo, doo, doo. It's over here. It's over hiding over here where you can't see it. There's our CPM, and this is going to be our top pages by CPM, which is how much they're willing to pay per thousand views, um, and so that Canva tutorial, so Canva might be willing to pay $15 because it's it's that exact one or their audience goes to that one. So Canva's paying the most. So what that would tell me is that I should do more Canva posts, right? Because if I can get more views or I should um, SEO better my Canva posts or things like that, uh, keywords for real estate agents, that's gonna have a really high one because um, People want to sell things to real estate agents, so they're going to be, right now, they're able to track with the ad information that they're real estate agents in the future. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to track that once they change that, um, being able to do the cookies, but especially if it's a um, blog post specifically for realtors, they'll know that the majority of the viewers coming are going to be realtors. So hopefully that helps a bunch of different ways to track your best um, blog posts. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.